Mis mor le David Adonai roi loyach sad Bino deshe yar bitzayni Al mei menuchot yenalayni Nafshi yeshovev Yoncheni vemaglei tzedek Leman shemo Gam ki yelech begei tzal mavet Lo yirara ki ata imadi Shiftecha omishanetecha Heima yenachamuni Taruch lefanai shulchan Neget zorerai Dishanta vashem eroshi Kosi revaya Ach tov vachesed Yirdefuni kol yamei chayai Veshaft bebeit Adonai Leorech yamim As Ken or Schiffman began our service chanting Psalm 23 in the Hebrew, you're welcome to join me in the recitation of Psalm 23 in English. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Today is a very difficult day. Very hard to say goodbye to someone that we all love so much. And today, we'll take a moment to really bring honor and tribute and love and praise to a wolf, a loving son, a loving brother, a loving husband, a loving father, a loving uncle, a loving colleague, a loving professor, a loving psychotherapist, and a loving friend. Our Bible teaches, Lakol zaman ve'et lakol chavetz takat a season is set for everything, a time for every experience under heaven. A time for planting and a time for reaping. A time for keeping and a time for discarding. A time for embracing and a time for refraining. A time for laughing and a time for weeping. A time for dancing and a time for wailing. A time for birthing and a time for dying. Every single year we read the Torah and we rejoice at its end. And even though the final section details the death of our beloved leader, Moses, upon its completion, we joyously return to the beginning and start to read the Torah from its opening verses. Judaism teaches that our lives are like a book, our actions are, and words are recorded. This week, Abe's book was finished. As I said, it's very hard to say goodbye. And yet we each can continue to write the chapters that lay unfinished. And I mean that literally, as Abe was working on yet another book. And figuratively, as we each carry on Abe's legacy, his love of family, his fierce loyalty for you. A man of character, brilliant with the biggest heart, an amazing counselor, teacher, and friend. The rabbis imagine Moses crying while writing the final chapters of the Torah telling of his death. And so it is for us today, though Abe's book is sealed with our tears, we must rejoice for we have the opportunity to share his book from the beginning. Hey, Abe has departed from this world at the age of 68. He leaves with a good name. 
he is at peace. He leaves his beloved family in mourning. The love of his life is Bashert, his one and only Uai Dill. 27 wonderful years of marriage together. And the apple of his eye, the diamond of his crown, we all know how much he loved you, Adam. And his sister, Ruth, brother-in-law, Vincenzo. Brother Bruce, sister and brother-in-law, Eileen and Elliot, adoring nieces, nephews, cousins, and friends. Abe now joins his parents of blessed memory, Holocaust survivors, Mary and Charles, in their eternal home in heaven. It's an impossible task to do Abe justice. I have to tell you, to prepare for today, Idell gave me his 16-page CV. I think she's going to quiz me on it later. But that was Abe, dedicated, caring, intellectually curious, cultured, brilliant, a man of principles with the most kind heart. A good neshama, a good soul, a mensch. He truly cared for all. His patients, his students, his family, his friends, and most especially, Idel and Adam. You two were his everything. To Idel, he was simply a B baby. A gifted psychologist, voracious reader, the ultimate professional, giving his patients his all, always with discretion privacy, confidentiality, and respect. And his CV of 16 pages lists his degrees and awards, his appointments, his positions, his 76 lectures and presentations around the world, his 60 publications in addition to all the books and the chapters that he wrote in other books. I don't think I understood one of the titles. But I certainly know that Abe was at the top of his field, world-renowned, highly respected, sought out by students, patients, editors, meetings. But yet here in Cleveland, Abe was most proudly known as Adam's dad, Idell's husband, and when he was still living, famous shoe salesman, Cuppy Cone's son-in-law. Abe didn't have an arrogant bone in his body, humble to a fault, even when he was most often the smartest person in the room. A great dresser, always had great taste, the nicest suits. Abe was kind, generous, and funny. He loved our Jewish traditions. Most of all, he was a fighter. So incredibly strong, fighting for more time. He fought the good fight. Abe was a man of class and good character. He lived life the right way. As I said, Abe's parents were Holocaust survivors. They say that Abe was made in Germany, his pregnant mother and father making their way to America on the boat, ending up with the extended family in Des Moines, Iowa. It was there where Abe was born. Not soon later, his parents moved to Philadelphia. Abe was raised in Winfield, speaking only Yiddish at home. He actually thought everyone in America spoke Yiddish picking up some broken English from the cartoons. Ruth remembers that you did everything with Abe growing up, whether it was going to the custard store on the corner or just playing. Abe began going to school at the Beth Jacob Yeshiva and then Overbrook High School, college at Temple studying philosophy. He always had a deep thirst for knowledge. Growing up, Abe was a competitive chess player who lettered in debate in high school, proudly putting that debate letter on his sweater. Sometimes he'd miss school, spending the day reading in the library. He'd spend time with the great Reb Zalman Chakter Shalomi, studying Jewish traditions and texts. Sister Ruth, brother Bruce, cousins Abe and Harry all remember Abe being wise beyond his years from a young age, mature, helping teach his parents how to be American. He was nicknamed the absent-minded professor by the family. After receiving his master's degree in clinical psychology at Minnesota State, his doctorate 
from the University of Mississippi, Abe came here to Cleveland in the fall of 1979 for a clinical psychology internship at Metro Health, and Cleveland's been home ever since. Almost 40 years of teaching as a professor at Case Western, clinical work on staff at different hospitals, including Parma General and Metro Health and in private practice. Abe would volunteer at the poverty clinic once a week so that he could continue to see patients that were unable to travel to the Beechwood offices where he was working. He became a full professor at Case in the Department of Psychiatry, which was unheard of for a person who was not an MD, Abe was a PhD, for a person who did not teach full-time as Abe maintained his private practice and hospital staff work. But it was Abe. Everyone wanted Abe. When asked why Abe pursued a career in psychology, the family answered immediately, Abe wanted to help people. He wanted to do something that he loved to do. He truly loved his work. Even through his health challenges, his decline in all the treatments, he still saw his patients. Last week, he saw a full load of patients, and even on Monday, he took appointments. And when he went back into the office after some time off to deal with his health, he had the biggest smile. So devoted to his patients, the only regret that he had was that he wouldn't, he couldn't close down his practice the way he wanted to. He had written these words, intending to send them to his patients. And I'll read what Abe wrote, quote, my sessions with you have been as rewarding for me as I hope they have been for you. My work as a psychotherapist has given purpose and meaning to my life. I am deeply grateful to you and the other individuals who have given me the gift of entering their lives." End quote. Everyone would agree that Abe was a scholar, an insightful clinician, gifted researcher, exqui exquisite writer, the most kind and collaborative person. Abe and Idell were fixed up. At the time, Idell's favorite restaurant was Cooker's. You might remember it. And so, Idell thought it would be the perfect place to meet. And when she mentioned it to Abe, Abe said he never heard of it. Idell was concerned that the relationship would work at all. How could she date someone who didn't know what Cooker's was? Well, as soon as Abe walked in that day, Idell saw Abe's blue eyes and it was love at first sight for Idell. It wasn't quite the same reaction for Abe. When he saw Idell, Idell, he didn't know what to think. He never dated anyone who wore nail polish, and she had socks with hearts on them. He always talked about that. Well, thankfully, it went to date number two, but it didn't quite go so well either. Abe didn't like the health insurance benefits that Idell's company offered. Somehow that was the conversation. And Idell was in charge of it. <laughs> the story goes that after that date, Abe called his best friend Eddie to talk. Abe said, I really like Idell, but she's an accountant. <laughs> Eddie quickly answered, What's wrong with that? Thankfully, Abe listened to Eddie and you continued dating. You shared a love of many things, and in those early years, Holden Arboretum was one of them. It so happened that one day you took a very long walk together, like five hours long. It turned out that Abe was planning to propose to you during that walk, but he didn't. He got cold feet. And later that day, after the five-hour walk, you were at your place in the village together, and Abe asked if you'd like to take a walk with him. <laughs> a few minutes into the walk, he turned to you and casually asked, I love you. I want to marry you. Will you marry me? And thankfully, Idell said yes. But then you asked him, what if I said I was too tired <laughs> to go on a second walk with you? Abe answered, well, I wouldn't have asked you to marry me then. Well, thankfully, you said yes twice, both to the walk and the proposal. And as we say, the rest is history. 27 wonderful years. Idell, you told me, Abe was most definitely my bus shirt. We were so lucky to have found each other. 
and we all know that you shared an amazing relationship. You told me Abe was a great partner. You never once had a fight. He was never judgmental, sweet to the end, supportive of your career and all your travels. He was your sweetie, your AB baby. You got each other. You knew how much he truly loved you. Together you enjoyed going to plays, the ballet, traveling from your honeymoon in Switzerland to the trips literally around the world. In the last 10 years, I'm gonna just name a few. Ireland to Italy, Luxembourg to London, Prague to Paris, Norway to Barcelona, China, Alaska, the Southwest, and of course, Israel. Idel, your closest friend shared these words with me. We knew Abe through your eyes from the morning after you met him. And the remarkable thing is over all these years, Abe continued to be just as you described him that first morning. You spoke to each other so gently, with so much warmth and affection, always with respect. Of the many things we loved about Abe, the biggest is the way that he loved you, fully, perfectly, and completely. He always had the same sweet tone of voice and the sweet look in his eye whenever he spoke of you or to you. He made it look so simple. He knew, understood, and appreciated what he had with you. He knew he had the best. We all agree. And when Adam was born, Abe's heart grew. His joy was even deeper. His smile was brighter. And by the way, Adam and Abe share that same smile and dimple. Abe actually performed Adam's bris with the help of the moil. And Abe said that day at his bris this, quote, I hope this is the only time that I ever hurt you in your life. And he never did, Adam. Dad loved you so much. And you made him so proud. I know that, he told me. Those skiing trips to Crested Butte. All those Saturdays, you'd go with Dad to Little Italy or the West Side Market. Abe would do anything for you, Adam. Abe wasn't into sports, if you knew him at all. He didn't play sports. He didn't grow up playing sports. But to spend time with his son, Abe would throw the ball, have a catch outside, He'd help out at the t-ball leagues where the parents had to coach. Only Abe would have to look to Idel to know which way to tell him how to run. <laughs> Abe took Adam to their first real sports game, and it was Abe's also. <laughs> and you shared that very special cross-country drive, that father-son bonding time. As I said, Abe was just so proud of you, Adam, your accomplishments at work as you begin your career. Abe loved to cook. He was the chef of the family, often working the grill. He made the, made the best cranberries for Thanksgiving. Abe was always learning and reading. The amount of books Abe owned filled up walls and walls and walls of bookshelves. He was a computer tech guy, starting using computers in the 70s, never stopping, often using them for sophisticated statistical analysis and research. Just up until this week, Abe had a Duolingo streak of 561 days learning German on his app on his iPad. He was always learning till the end. And whenever I'd visit Abe, he always wanted a Devar Torah or a book recommendation. Abe picked up photography when Adam left the house to go to college. And of course, Abe was an instant success, winning numerous awards. He currently has two pictures hanging at the Cleveland airport. And one of his pieces was just selected for the upcoming JCC art show. In typical Abe fashion, he needed to continue to add to his camera collection with new cameras, lenses, camera bags, tripods, and all the chazarai. And he enjoyed being part of the Chagrin Valley Camera Club. He recently enjoyed an hour at the Cleveland Botanical Gardens photographing orchids. Nothing could keep him down. Abe was a great friend. Idell said, all my friends loved Abe more than they loved me. You would spend the holidays always together with close friends, Sylvia and Paul and Dale and Alan. Abe would always lead the kiddish. He's a beautiful davener. He and Sylvia would make sure the entire Seder was done in Hebrew, holding on to those most special traditions. His brother-in-law, Elliot, would often travel to Cleveland for work and stay at the house, staying up late with Abe, watching movies and laughing. 
and you told me that you shared the title as favorite sons-in-law to Cuppy and Esther. Abe was extremely giving, philanthropic to so many organizations. Abe loved his best friend, Eddie, who was his grounding force and anchor. They went to Woodstock together. You may see the tickets that are in that tie-dye frame at the house. They're real. Abe was there. They shared Abe's hippie phase together. And Eddie and his wife, Eileen and children, Sarah, Ryan and Jamie and Jake were considered part of the family. And God's son, Jake, wrote these words, quote, Abe was a loving example of a man, healer, mentor, and friend who irrevocably changed my path for the better. Even as a child, I always felt a connection to Abe, likely feeling drawn to his warmth, his kindness, and humor. I grew up wanting to be like him. He had an abundant empathy that was engrossing and impactful. This was most obvious for me after my father died, when he seemed to be able to sense when I was not when I was feeling that void. Abe was encouraging at every opportunity, making you feel interesting, important, and loved. He always gave me perspective and hope. Jake is now completing his studies in child psychiatry. And he added that there is no one that helped shape me by example and guidance other than my own parents, then Gabe, then Abe. And Abe has gifted his own office furniture to Jake as he sets up his first office. The family is extremely grateful to all the doctors and nurses and staff at the Cleveland Clinic and Montefiore for all the support and care they've given to Abe. In this week's Torah portion, Pikude, we read the final chapters of the book of Exodus Sefer Shemot. The book begins with our slavery in Egypt and ends with the construction of our tabernacle, the portable sanctuary, in preparing to journey to Israel. The portion tells of the holy vestments, the clothing of the high priest, almost looked like Abe, very well dressed, in addition to tunics and robes and headpieces and breastplates that high priest wore special shoulder patches inscribed with the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. They were heavy, very colorful, a different gemstone for each tribe. It wasn't to be showy or ostentatious, but it was a physical reminder that the high priest carried the weight of the Jewish people and a spiritual and intellectual reminder of his mission, not only to carry the burden of the people, but also to listen to their needs, to lift them up using broad shoulders. And our Abe just did that. Not only did he dress sharp like the high priest, more importantly, he shouldered the burdens of so many. He listened and he cared and advised and he treated and he healed. He lifted up those who were fallen. He carried them, gave us support so we could help ourselves. Abe did this for each and every one of us. Abe was a tireless worker for the betterment of all. And I will most certainly miss him, his smile, his humor, his insight, and his friendship. I'm not sure if you know, but Abe actually died on his Hebrew birthday. I checked. I checked. I'm not sure what it means. Moses was born and died on his birthday. I think there's some connection there. I think there's some connection. Abe was extremely special. He really helped all of us. It's my hope and prayer that this treasury of wonderful memories of Abe remains a strong and lasting influence, not only for his family, not only for our community, but for our world. May his name always bring blessings. Yihi zichrono baruch, and we say, Amen. We'll rise now as our cantor leads us in the memorial prayer.
אל מלא רחמים, שוכן במרומים. המצוי מנוחה נכונה, תחת כנפי השכינה, במעלות הקדושים הטהורים, כזוהר הרקיע מזהירים, את נשמת אברהם זה בן חיים הלוי ומלכה שהלך לעולמו בגן עדן תהי מנוחתו הענם בל הרחמים אז תראה הוא בסדק נפח על העולמים וצרור בצרור על החיים את נשמתו אדוני הוא נחלתו וינוח בשלום וינוח בשלום על משכבו ונאמר אמן. Exalted, compassionate God, grant infinite rest, rest in your sheltering presence among the holy and pure, to the soul of our beloved Avram Zev, Abe Wolf, who has gone to his eternal home. Merciful one, we ask that our loved one find perfect peace in your eternal embrace. May he merit the reward for living a righteous life filled with kindness and love. May he rest in peace, and we say, Amen. Please be seated. The tournament follows at Beit Olam Cemetery, and then the family will receive friends at the Wolf Home for Shiva, 31050 Gates Mills Boulevard in Pepper Pike. Today, following burial until 8 p.m., tomorrow, Monday and Tuesday from 2 to 5 and 7 to 9. The next three nights, Sunday, Monday and Tuesday, uh, we'll be holding a 7 p.m. evening minion service. And those who wish to contribute may do so in Abe's memory to the Abraham W. Wolf PhD Endowed Fund for the Graduate Fellowship in Clinical Psychology at Case Western or the Mandel Jewish Day School Head Headmaster School Discretionary Endowment Fund.